Not all entries are created equal. Should you identify higher probability entries and apply larger position sizes to them? Let's find out. The idea is to calibrate position sizing according to your entry signal's probability of success. Suppose you have a regular Bollinger Bands breakout strategy that enters the market when prices close outside the bands. What if this move is accompanied by an impulsive bar and a breakout of a prior trading range? These signals point to higher probability trades. If you could go big when such signals occur, you could increase your number of outsized wins. Sounds logical, but does it work over the long term? Let's do some backtesting to find out. To establish a performance baseline, I'll take advantage of the Bollinger Bands and its inbuilt trailing stops. This strategy goes long when price penetrates the upper Bollinger Band, with the lower band acting as a trailing stop loss. Short trades are symmetrical. With a fixed 0.1 lot size, performance on the pound yen has been decent from 2003 to 2021. Together with its simplicity, this strategy offers a great platform for further development. Here's the algorithm structure for evaluating entries. If the baseline Bollinger Band entry condition is satisfied, I will trade 0.1 lots. I will include three optional entry conditions that detect trading range breakouts, high volatility, and long-term trend alignment. If true, each of these conditions should increase the probability of a successful trade. For every optional condition that is satisfied, I will increase the position size by 0.1 lots. Sizes will thus vary between 0.1 to 0.4 lots, in increments of 0.1 lots. I will now go through each of the three optional conditions. Firstly, for the range breakout condition, I will use an 80 period SR% percent indicator to detect channel breakouts. This indicator calculates the percentage of time the current close falls within the high-low range of each of the previous 80 bars. In this example here, this large bullish candle has a SR% percent of 0 because its close lies outside the high-low range of all 5 candles in the look-back period. Low SR% percent values mean that the market is trending or prices are trading close to the top or bottom of their range. For this strategy, the channel breakout condition will be true when the SR% percent equals 0, meaning that prices have broken out of the highest highs or lowest lows of the previous 80 periods. Isn't this the same as the classic Donkian breakout? Yes it is, but by using the SR% percent indicator and adjusting the threshold, you are also able to detect when prices are approaching, but haven't penetrated, the boundaries of the trading range. To achieve this, you can toggle the threshold to something in the 5-10% to range. Next up is the high volatility condition. This high volatility condition is satisfied when the previous bars range is at least twice the 14 period ATR. The probability of a sustainable trend increases when you have an impulsive Bollinger Band penetration. And finally we have the long term trend alignment condition. I'll use the 30 period exponential moving average on the 4 hour time frame to gauge the long term trend. If this EMA has been rising for at least 5 consecutive bars, there's a higher probability I'll get an uptrend on the 30 minute time frame. Likewise, for shorts, I'll be looking for the 4 hour EMA to have fallen for at least 5 consecutive bars. The programming structure is slightly different here, because the EMA direction has to be paired with its respective Bollinger Band breakout condition. With the optional conditions programmed, let's work on calibrating the position sizes. I'll need a multiplier for the default 0.1 position size. This will vary from 1 to 4, thus creating lots in the 0.1 to 0.4 range. First, I will reset the multiplier to 1 whenever the baseline Bollinger breakout conditions are satisfied. I don't want my current position size to be affected by previous trades. The logic tabs in Alga Wizard are executed from left to right. Next we have the three optional conditions described previously. If any of these three conditions are satisfied, the lot multiplier is increased by 1. I'll show the channel breakout condition as an example. After cycling through the three optional conditions, I'll finally compute the position size by applying the lot multiplier to the default 0.1 size. This lot size variable is then called up when programming the strategy's market order. That's it for programming. Here's an example of a trade where the high volatility and channel breakout optional conditions were satisfied. 0.3 lots were opened as a result. Now let's back test the strategy to see if the programming has paid off. As per the baseline, I tested the strategy on the M30 pound yen, from 2003 to 2021. Here's the breakdown of the position sizes traded. The equity curve looks very similar because the trade sequence in profits and losses, in pips, are identical. 
profit factor has increased from 1.24 to 1.3, while return over drawdown has increased from 7.1 to 11.8. Most notably, net profit has increased 2.5 times from $21,000 to $56,000. Is this simply the result of trading more lots, or did I successfully target the high probability trades? To find out, I computed the average lot size of the above backtest, which came to 0.21 lots. I then retested the original strategy with a fixed 0.21 lots throughout. The net profit was $45,000 in that case. Looks like going big on the higher probability trades netted me an additional 25% profit. Lastly, I wanted to check whether the three optional conditions were effective at picking out higher probability trades. I decided to plot the win rate for each of the four position sizes. Indeed, entries that satisfied at least two of the optional conditions had win rates of 47%, significantly higher than the overall win rate of 41%. Despite consisting only a third of the 1640 trades, these entries accounted for 74% of the overall profits. A dynamic position sizing scheme that increases lot sizes for higher probability trades can indeed pay dividends. Identifying these higher probability trades is central to your success. You should never be too confident though, your best bet is to use entry conditions that adhere to traditional technical analysis principles. The lot size increments will depend on your risk appetite and account capital. If in doubt, consult your historical drawdowns and be conservative. Thanks for subscribing, and stay tuned for more trading tips.